Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Our first Today in History story um, takes us back to the year 1995. Um, occurred today, um, the 22nd of July. It was a very shocking story that happened. So what happened was a woman called Susan Smith was found guilty of drowning her two children in South Carolina. So a jury found her guilty of two counts of murder, one for each of the little boys she left under the water of John D. Long Lake. So initially, um, Susan Smith had put out a public appeal saying, you know, on national television, um, saying that a black man had carjacked and kidnapped her children. She said she stopped at an intersection of, you know, a traffic light. And there a black man came over, pulled her out of the car, you know, and drove away with two of her children. So she came on national TV to say um, she was appealing for the rescue of her kids. You know, one is 14 months old, the other is three years old. And it was so shocking to, when we saw that nine days later, she was found guilty of killing her kids. That's because she had strapped them to the car and simply, you know, let the car drive down into the lake, basically drowning her two boys. It was a very sad situation, very shocking, because prosecutors say she killed her children because a man had broken her heart about eight days or so ago. But she's denying that, saying that's not true, that it's unfair of the prosecutors to say because of a heartbreak, that's why she killed her boys. Mm -hmm. But it was just such a sad thing. And I think what's even shocking is that um, a year later, in 1996, um, some people went to the lake where those boys drowned to look at memorials of those boys. And, and then seven people then drowned while trying to look at memorials for the boys, including four children. It just really is a very scary, traumatizing experience That's crazy. that occurred this um, day in history. Two things. Uh, first of one, the first uh, is the, uh, you know, the fact that, you know, I, I don't think we, well, you know, a lot of people would first of all point to postpartum, postpartum uh, depression. Uh, here, but I don't. From the you know details of the case, it doesn't look like you know postpartum depression. It, it, this looks a little bit more like a person who committed murder, you know, because of other issues that she may have been dealing with. The second one is white women tears. So a white woman um, w commits a crime, and the very first idea that pops in the head, you know, how it's to, to blame a crime. black man. Yeah, it's to blame a black man. You know, and they imagine that there's some black criminal around their, you know, community that has been kidnapping children. And, and that's, that's how it was That's because first a black idea. man has been so criminalized and yeah. victimized that it seems like a convenient excuse for whatever, you know, alibi you're looking for, whatever crack, crack you know. It's totally wild. Totally Terrible. wild. Anyway, um, let's move to the year uh, 2003. And this is um, right after the, you know, Iraq and Afghanistan invasion by the United States. Um, in, the, in, in the middle, you know, of that period, uh, some, you know, U.S. soldiers were kidnapped, all female mm -hmm. um, soldiers. Um, one of them, Jessica Lynch. Uh, her name was a Private Jessica Lynch. She was a prisoner of war. It was on this day she was rescued from an Iraqi hospital and received a hero's welcome when she returned to her hometown um, in uh, West Virginia. Uh, she was a 19-year-old supply clerk who was captured by Iraqi forces in March 2003 and eventually spent some time with them before she was eventually rescued. Um, she was taken to a military hospital in Germany for treatment and then uh, returned to the United States. Um, but there was, of course, uh, some controversy concerning her release and um, you know, her rescue from the Iraqi forces. Um, the major, the biggest one was, eventually she put out a book uh, titled I Am A Soldier Too, The Jessica Lynch Story. Uh, the major controversy was that the media tried to sell the story that when she was captured, she fought, you know, and, you know, and, and, you know, tried to defend herself and her fellow soldiers, did all she possibly could, you know, fired all her bullets, you know, but, you know, I, you know as a hero that she was, um, eventually she was captured. But when she eventually was released, she simply said, no, none of that happened. Actually, I was knocked unconscious when the, you know, our vehicle um, uh, uh, turned upside down. And, you know, that's how I was captured. 
And so all the, you know, Washington Post and some other, you know, media organizations that are trying to make her look like a hero, she basically denounced all of that and said, nah, um, I really was unconscious when mm. I was captured and none of that um, happened. There also was controversy because it was three of them that were captured. One of them died in the attack. And then there was another um, female soldier also who was um, 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 also captured that was released but didn't make the news. And the controversy of the conspiracy theory is really that she was black and that's the reason she didn't make the news. So Jessica Lynch was celebrated as, you know, given, you know, all the publicity, all the heroes welcome, you know, and all of that, you know, after she was released from the Iraqi forces. But the other soldier who also was captured with her didn't even get mentioned um, as, as, as a U.S. soldier who was, um, you know, captured and released. Um, she was a black officer. I uh, hope I can find her name someplace. Uh, maybe I can't. Anyway, she was a black, um, you know, soldier um, mm -hmm. and didn't get the same publicity. So these were the two controversial um, issues concerning Jessica Lynch and her capture and, of course, release um, in that period. This, this is all in 2003. And by the way, of course, the uh, United States, you know, remained in Iraq for many, 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 many more, more years. Hmm. Still trying to wrap my head around the story. Why would two people who went through the same experience you know, come out and then one is celebrated and the other isn't, you know, you, you can't well, really deny the race thing, you know, it always comes up in those circles. Yeah. But good thing that they were both rescued on this day in history. Absolutely. All right, stay with us. Uh, we're moving to our first major conversation for today, and that is uh, Nigeria and the international community. We're, here, we're hearing conversations on the UK trying to step in uh, with regards to Namdi Kanu's case. There's also Republic of Benin, where reports say have uh, refused to answer the Nigerian government's request for a tradition of uh, Sunday Boho. And so we're going to be looking at these issues and trying to see where Nigeria truly stands in the international community. Is Nigeria still Africa's big brother? Or have we lost that spot? And, you know, how relevant, you know, really is Nigeria to the rest of the continent? We'll talk about it when we come back. Stay with us.